I want you to think back to March 2020. There was a lot going on in the world then. And in America, they were in the final stages of the presidential election. At that time in March, there were seven candidates left. Of those, how many do you think were aged over 70? Yes, over 70. 90. Well, it wasn't one, two, three, four, five. It was six of the seven candidates were over 70. And as the COVID, as those COVID hit, in this country, we had a skill shortage, an absolute crisis. We needed more doctors and nurses and all sorts. So the government said, please, could people who've retired come out of retirement and please come and help us? Doctors, nurses, teachers, business people, scientists. And I don't know about you, but I have heard nothing to say that was a mistake, they were too old, it wasn't safe, it was dangerous. No, they just came out. I've really not heard anything about it. And people helped in the crisis and made a difference. So you might guess I want to talk about age. And I guess if I'm going to talk about age, I need to talk about mine. So let's get that out of the way. We'll be nudging each other. How old do you think she is? <laughs> so my age is 66. And I've just launched, four years ago, I launched my second business. And I want to work for another 20 or 30 years. And, well, the Queen does it. Why shouldn't I? So I've got lots to give. So what I want to talk about now is why am I interested in this? Where did it all start? Some research that I've done and what I think we need to do about it. So it all started about five years ago. I started being sent people who had just retired. And they wanted to do things and had no idea how to go about it. So one of the people was Jules. And she had just retired from a very senior position. And she came to be near to her parents. And of course, she didn't know anybody really locally. So she thought, right, what am I going to do? I'm going to go and help people for free. So she wrote to the local council, to charities, to schools. And she, she did a lot around helping leadership teams and people who were in leadership positions. And she said, can I help you? And what was the response? Zilch, absolutely nothing. Free offer of help. And so I was asked, could you help her? Because I'm known to be networked and know lots of people. So could you find somebody who could use her skills? So we had a coffee. And at the coffee, Jules said in passing, I've always had this idea for a business. So I said to her, OK, well, what's happened to that? Oh, well, I couldn't possibly do that. I'm 60. All my friends are retiring. And I'm going, what? I'm 60, I was nearly 60 at that time. I'm nearly 60 and I want to work for all these years to come and all the rest. And it's quite interesting because she says now, I looked at you and thought, well, if you can work for another 20 years, so can I. So we sort of switched something. She said, what you did was to flick a switch in my mind to think I could go and do anything. I don't have to retire just because other people are retiring. And then I met David. So David had been running a very well-known company and as part of that, he had got to understand the issues of people who get too much debt and are struggling. And he wanted to go and help charities that were helping people in debt. And he came to see me, and bless him, he showed me his CV, and I looked at it, and I just thought, oh no. And what was bizarre was, he hadn't actually even included the expertise that he had about helping people in debt. He hadn't had to do anything since he left school. So I started meeting more of these people, and since I've met hundreds. And what I realized is there's sort of some really common themes here. And the first thing that I realized was retirement is like a bereavement. I don't know whether anybody here has lost somebody close to you, but there's a well-known series of emotions that you go through. And there's something called the grief curve. And 
when you retire, there's something similar. You go through, it goes through from sort of anger and guilt and then a period of depression before you get acceptance and some enthusiasm again. And different people will go through different elements of these. Some will get stuck in different parts for longer, others very briefly. But if you think about it, retirement, probably most of you are much younger, so you actually haven't thought about it. But overnight, you lose a whole network of your contacts. If you think about people at work and how much they mean to you and how big a part of your life they are, overnight that's gone. Of course, you might see one or two still. And then you lose a self-identity. Who are you? Um, and you also lose confidence. So retirement is actually not a very good thing to go through. Everyone talks about it as a dream, but the reality is not quite like that for a lot of people. So I then did a bit more research about this, and I thought, this is not just retirement, it's age generally. So I found two pieces of research. One was from Jobs Go Public, and they asked people at work, how well are your skills recognised and being used? 75% of people aged over 50, I do hate all this age stuff, but anyway, people over 50 said, no, they're not. So three quarters of people working over 50 say their skills aren't being used and recognised. Isn't that a tragedy? And then I found some research by, it was done for the government for a campaign around fuller working lives. And they asked construction companies how important and how much you're prioritising investing in advanced IT skills for people aged over 50 again. And advanced IT skills are things like robotics, um, 3D printing, virtual reality. And the answer was nearly all of them, 87% said, no, it's not really important, it's not a priority. So just think about that. These are the people who are the supervisors, managers, probably the ones making the investment decisions of the future, but we're not actually going to train them in those skills. So I began to think, this is really disastrous. We've got to show that there are people here who've got such a lot to offer. How can we help people? How can we test out and show people that there's such value? So we have been testing out with the support of Leeds City Council, and they call it intergenerational activities. And what we've been doing is getting the experienced generation, that means retired people, but they're not really, they're unretired. So we're getting them to mentor tech entrepreneurs. And oh my goodness, we did our last event just two weeks ago. The buzz in the room, I, I can't tell you, it just kind of, it just warms you. And what's interesting is the older generation say, do you know, I never thought the entrepreneurs would be interested in me. I didn't think they would, you know, think I've got anything to offer. And the entrepreneurs say, actually, I didn't think they would be interested in me. And the honest truth is, it couldn't be further away from how they're feeling. They both have got a lot to offer each other. The older generation, I have to say, are learning from the younger about tech and all sorts of other things and loving it too. So here we have all these people wanting to help. What do we do? Let's go back to Jules and David. So Jules, we switched that button on in her head and literally our coffee turned into lunch and we started talking about what her business might be, this business she'd always dreamed about. And by the end of lunch, literally, we'd launched it. And that was six years ago and she's been hugely successful. She doesn't make it anything huge. She combines this with a very different life. She spends plenty of time with friends, walking, um, lots of holidays, but she also runs this business. And one of the companies she's been helping said to her recently, you know, Jules, our share price is doing really well. I think quite a lot of that is down to you. How amazing is that? And David, all we had to do with David was to repackage him, write a decent CV, help him with some interview skills. And he went off and he's got a role in one of the leading charities, helping people in debt. Two people who are just an example of the thousands of people who would like to be doing more and don't know how to go about it. So what do we need to do? There are so many things, but let's focus on three. First of all, society, government and the media 
Can we all stop talking about an ageing population only as a problem? Where are the opportunities? What can we do? How do we help people to get out there? In a way, we help people with their careers all through from leaving school, college, university or whatever. We do nothing to help people at the end. So that leads me on to employers. So what can we do to help people as they're coming up to retirement so they don't fall off that cliff edge? You know, people have a lot of mental health problems around this stage and we never really talk about that. Retirement really only seems to be talked about as this dreamy, you know, people holding hands and skipping on a beach and things at this age. And it's not quite like that. So what can employers do? How could maybe people come back and help and mentor younger people? Maybe they could take part in community activities. Maybe they could go into schools, be part of those school and community relationships. And then what can all of you do? What I would love is if you would go and talk to one or two people who retired in the last few years. Ask them about the highs and the lows. What would they have liked to have happened when they retired? Some people will be having a great time. They want to be with their grandchildren. They want to be just with friends. But I think you might find a lot of people want to do a lot more than they are. If we can get this right, if we can rethink age, if we can rethink retirement, there's a win-win for everyone. Let's do it. Let's get out there. Let's rethink age. Thank you.